Some of the most exciting research going on in an area, you know, San Diego is full of exciting research on a whole bunch of different things. But one of the most exciting things happening, and the president announced a $1 billion over a decade plan to accelerate this, is something called BRAIN, and it stands for Brain Research Through Advancing Innovative Neurotechnologies. To help us understand what that means, uh, Professor Sanowski, uh, who is uh, Computational Neurologic Neurobiology Laboratory, Howard Hughes Medical Institute Investigator, Francis Crick Chair. Professor, welcome to the program. <laughs> Wonderful to be here. I said all of that because I thought, my goodness, you really, have the, you really have the credentials. Are you in charge of all this? No. Um, I was, however, instrumental in bringing this uh, grand challenge for understanding brain function and dysfunction to the President's uh, office. And, uh, was at the uh, April 2nd announcement for the Brain Initiative. Very exciting, uh, really inspiring, and uh, UCSD is really gearing up big time to take advantage of this opportunity. Out there on the Mesa, as they call Torrey Pines Road, right? You've got to Salk and you've got a bunch of those institutions. Yes, yes that's right. The Scripps Research Institute, Burnham, uh, UCSD, we're all partners, and the neuroscience community on the Mesa is unparalleled anywhere in the world. What's your role going to be in this? I'm helping to organize a new brain activity map center that will be announced on May 17th by the Chancellor. Uh, the, uh, so you're Kozla. preempting him today by... <laughs> okay, so we're go you're announcing it. Now what does that mean? Now that, that sounds pretty exciting. You're going to pull this stuff together. Yes. Uh, we're going to bring together engineers and, and neurotechnology is the focus and that is say building new tools to help us accelerate brain research for understanding how the brain functions normally and when it doesn't, what's wrong with it so we can fix it. So it'll be engineers, it'll be biologists, and uh, medical school researchers who are working on humans, because ultimately it's uh, the human uh, benefit that is, is the focus of the Brain Initiative. What do you hope will happen once you map this out and know a lot more about the brain in terms, is it brain injuries like we're focusing this week here on the NFL injuries, the concussive injuries, the encephalopathy problem uh, that, uh, that you know, f football players have, a lot of them, and in the case uh, of, of, you know, local football player, we find suicide as a result. Are these some of the things you hope you'll be a, a better understanding of? Well, there's a whole host of disorders that we are just beginning to understand, like a traumatic brain injury, uh, we know now that it involves the long term, uh, the long distance connections between different parts of the brain. Uh, when those are disconnected, uh, then you have uh, the communication system breaks down. Uh, Alzheimer's, it's a disease that's becoming more and more prevalent because we have an aging population. The problem is that the traditional ways that these uh, disorders uh, are treated is with drugs, and there hasn't been a successful Alzheimer's drug, or for that matter, uh, any uh, psychiatric or psychotic uh, drug in, in the last 10 years that has been uh, approved. So this is really a problem. We have to understand something more, uh, a, a deeper understanding of w where the problems lie in the brain, and that's going to be the focus of the Brain Initiative. Now, uh, Professor, let me just ask you, because this is a, obviously a huge challenge. We're showing some, you provided us with some video, and I want you to turn and look at that screen right there and help us to understand what does this animation show? Well, this is uh, a piece of a, of a single neuron. It's called a dendrite. Now you're seeing uh, the connection between uh, an axon, which is the uh, green, large green. Uh, it's, a, it's very, very tiny. You, you have to shrink yourself down to the size of an uh, atom in order to see this. Uh, it's simulated on a computer. This is work that's done in my lab. Uh, Tom Bartol is the architect. And what you're seeing is the release of neurotransmitter. One neuron is communicating to another. And you can see all the different colors of different molecules that are involved in that uh, very simple but very complex process. Almost all brain disorders are problems that can be traced to uh, something goes wrong at those synapses. Yeah. So uh, if we can understand them better in terms of how all the pieces fit together and, and give rise to that function and, and when something goes wrong to, to fix it, we'll be in a much better position to uh, help people with schizophrenia, autism, and many other mental disorders. Well, that's fascinating. In other words, this animation presumes that you're an atom looking at the brain functions, right? I mean, this is the perspective you're getting? Yes. Uh, what you're seeing there is looks like fireworks. It's actually something that happens in your brain when you fall asleep. Really? Yes. Uh, so you've been able to map this much of what the brain already does. You've been able to understand at least this much, right? We understand some very basic things about memory, and that's from a part of the brain called the hippocampus, which is very important for long-term memory. Something that fades after a while. 
as I found out. I remember things from when I was much younger more than I remember things from a couple of months ago. Is that what you're looking at? Yes, and in fact, that's the early sign of Alzheimer's. That's not a good, a good diagnosis. Okay, so people will accuse me of much more than that. Now, well, by the way, it's also, it could just be normal senescence, so don't worry about it. That's right, just normally getting old. Right. And there's some things I want to forget, by the way, which is also a, anyway. So, but you, what are you hoping, what, what, are the, what is the biggest barrier to getting to the spot where you're going to be able to make these kinds of uh, real leaps uh, to help people with these problems? So we've really been hampered because the techniques that we're using right now were developed uh, 50 years ago. Uh, the microelectrode that allowed us to record from a single neuron was a great advance in 1960. But here we are, uh, over 50 years later, we're still using it. We need to be able to uh, record from more neurons. Our brain has 100 billion neurons. 100 billion? Yes. And if by recording one at a time, you can see how long it will take us before we get through the rest of the brain. But if we can record from hundreds or thousands of neurons, and the goal of the Brain Initiative is to scale that up to a million neurons, we'll be able to get a much better picture of the pattern of activity, and it'll speed up research by a factor of 100. What is the path of technology that would get you along that line to go from one to 100 billion? We desperately need help from the engineers. Yeah. Nanotechnologists who have miniaturized uh, mechanisms and sensors uh, have the tools that we need. We need to work very closely together with the engineers. And so at UCSD, we're going to bring together the electrical engineers and the nanotechnologists to work directly in the, our labs, uh, directly with neuroscientists, and, and take that then to the human uh, once that's been perfected. Well, wow, that's just fascinating stuff. I want to have you back with uh, progress reports on this as we spend all this money. Hopefully at the end, though, a, a tremendous, uh, so to speak, pot of gold of, uh, it's, it's a revolution, isn't it, of, of brain uh, understanding? Well, what could be more exciting than understanding something about who we are?